I am honored to have back with us someone who's a very dear friend, Alex Newman. For those of you not familiar with Alex, he's a regular contributor to the New American Magazine. Alex holds a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Florida. He has been working for the New American Magazine and also owns a consulting firm. His frequent topics include economics, education, finance, banking, business, and politics. Alex grew up in Latin America, Europe, and Africa, giving him a unique insight into world events. You can find Alex's work at thenewamerican.com. By the way, their print magazine, as well as their online magazine, The New American, I believe is the best in the business. And I encourage you to go there, thenewamerican.com. Alex, welcome back to Operation Freedom. I hope you are there. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. Great to be with you. Your your voice is music to my ears. You know, Alex, they they tried a major league attack on us starting around 155, right before we went on air. They don't want what we want to talk about getting out to the public. And what we're yeah. talking about, Alex, is this goat rodeo of an, of an election. You know, I spoke about in your in your introduction that you grew up in Latin America, Europe, and Africa. Some of which I, I would imagine some of your your upbringing was in third world countries. Alex, tell me exactly. Well, why some people are mad at me when I say in the People's Republic of Ann Arbor that the election we just experienced on November 3rd was indicative of something that would have occurred in a third world country. Yeah, it's very true, Dave. I actually grew up almost exclusively in third world countries. I spent a few years in Switzerland, but other than that, I was in the third world uh, almost all my life. And I have never seen something as ridiculous as I've seen in this election. Yeah, you know, I spent seven years in Mexico, and I still remember everybody would be walking around with black thumbs. And I said, hey, why has everybody got a black thumb? And they said, oh, it's so that nobody votes twice. I'm thinking, wow, you know, in Mexico, they know how to prevent people from voting twice. But apparently in America, we are not capable of that. It's absolutely ludicrous. The election is a farce. The censorship is all they have left. And, Dave, I was, I was thrilled to hear that you and I are in the same club. I, too, have been banned from Facebook, and I think all the cool people are doing it, so uh, we should start a club. So, Alex, d- dissect your take. You know, you do great dissections, and, 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 and part of it is, is, is we've mentioned, is, is your background. You know, you've experienced so much in your life. Dissect November 3rd, November 4th in the aftermath for us uh, from your standpoint. Yeah, and I mean, you called it. Your your interview with General McInerney and some of the work that you were doing, you explained precisely what was going to happen. Um, it was incredible. You know, I, I knew they were going to try to rig the election. In fact, we published an article in The New American in September warning that there was an effort to have a color revolution take place in the United States, that it was going to involve massive voter fraud, that it was going to involve uh, demonstrations and protests, and, of course, total efforts to control the narrative with the fake media, with the uh, censorship on social media. It took one word about vote fraud for Facebook to shut me down. Uh, same thing, of course, that they've been trying to do to President Trump, censoring the, pres- the elected president of the United States. And that's because they know that the most important element of a color revolution, of an effort to overthrow a legitimately elected government, is control of the narrative. If they lose control of the narrative, they lose control of the public, and their operation fails. And, and I've been arguing for years, Dave, that Fox News... Uh, you know, and there's some good people on Fox News. In fact, I know good people who work at Fox News. But I've argued for years that Fox News is significantly more dangerous than the regular fake media because patriots and Christians and conservatives and Trump voters, they already know all the rest of the media is fake. Right? If CNN and CBS and ABC and the Washington Compost and the New York Times all told us that Joe Biden was the president-elect, I mean, you know, if they told us that the sun came up in the morning, we'd go to the window and make sure that that was true. And that's true for, you know, the 75-plus million people who voted for Donald Trump. And so they knew they needed Fox News to play along. That's why Fox News was used to call the election in Arizona for Biden long before anybody had any idea what was going to happen in Arizona. It was the only way they could make it credible to Trump voters, to Christians, to conservatives. Fortunately, that blew up in their faces like nothing that I've ever seen before in my life. Uh, Fox News is shedding millions of viewers, and they deserve it. You know, the, uh, Rupert Murdoch was a, was a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, a deep state headquarters news corporation, which owns Fox News and the New York Post and the Wall Street Journal, also has been a corporate member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Rupert Murdoch's son 
Uh, James Murdoch is a corporate member of the Council on Foreign Relations. So these are the people who are consorting with the Hillary Clintons and the Joe Bidens and the Dick Cheney's of the world. They are the swamp. They are the deep state. And I think one of the best things that's going to come out of this election is the total discrediting of Fox News in the minds of the, the true patriots in the United States. Well, you know, Alex, um, I, as I mentioned the first half hour, or at least tried to, hopefully folks heard it, you know, for 10 years I've been shooting my mouth off about Fox and I've gotten nothing but grief when I've been saying that these guys are part of the uh, of the problem, not the, not the answer. That, yep. that there are some, there are what I call the show ponies, some of them, like uh, Tucker and, and Hannity and Ingram and Dobbs, who do, you know, some you know, time, they, they do fine job. But if you look at the management, Alex, the Murdochs sit on the Council on Foreign Relations. And where do you think that, what do you think they're going to do when the time's right? And the time was right. And Alex, two weeks before the election, when they named the guy in charge of their decision desk, this Ashkin guy, I said, whoa, 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 look at this guy's background. This guy's a deep state, deep state, uh, I call him something different than a puppet, but we'll, for, for radio's sake, we'll call him puppet. Alex, you knew where this was going to go when they named him as in charge of the decision desk. It was obvious. It was obvious that this was going to happen. And so we've been warning about the same thing, Dave. And now comes the real battle. Okay, they, the, the fake media and the Democrats and even establishment Republicans like George Bush and others are trying to demor. I mean, this is a psychological operation being, being waged. It's, it's a military-style psychological operation being waged against the American people. They want to demoralize us. They want us to believe that all hope is lost, that we are going to live in a socialist state, that the new world order is inevitable, and that the Biden presidency is inevitable. Well, I submit to you that that is far from settled. I think there's still a very good chance that Donald Trump will become uh, the president once again uh, when the uh, Electoral College votes are counted, and if not, uh, as this makes its way through the Supreme Court. So, uh, you know, I remain optimistic. The voter fraud was just too brazen. I mean, if, if I didn't know any better, I'd think that they, they wanted us to know that they were stealing this election to kind of rub it in our noses. But uh, this is not going to work out well for them. Uh, there are multiple pieces that are already moving into place. I've spoken with state legislators in Pennsylvania and in Arizona. Uh, you know, the media wants us to think that, that that is over, that there's no chance because a couple of rhino Republican leaders in those states said we're not going to mess with it. So, uh, you know, again, we are being demoralized, we're being lied to and manipulated. I don't think they're going to be able to get away with it this time. Well, folks, we're speaking with Alex Newman from thenewamerican.com. You know, Alex, Joe, baseman Joe Biden, as demented as he is, well, you know, he slips every once in a while. And he gave us an indication several weeks before the before the election of what was going to happen. Derek, if you can hit that clip, let's let's have Alex to give his take after he after we hear it. Secondly, we're in a situation where we have put together, and you guys did, did it for our administration, the President Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Alex, the yep. most extensive voter fraud organization in the history of politics. He's, well, there you go. That's right. That, I think that's why they were trying to hide him in the basement so much, because you know, every once in a while he actually speaks the truth. Like, you're not supposed to say that, Joe. Uh, but, I mean, that's exactly what they did. This was literally the most extensive voter fraud operation in all of American history. Biden let the cat out of the bag. And, of course, the fake fact checkers, oh, he didn't really mean that. What he really meant was, uh, so, you know, he, he's demented and senile and, and can't be trusted when he speaks when it's convenient for the deep state, when it's convenient for the fact checkers. But otherwise, he's truthful and honest and reliable and all the rest of it. it it's such a brazen attempt to steal our nation. And, you know, the fake fact checkers, I think, deserve uh, a dishonorable mention here. Uh, you are in, of course, Michigan, and it was so obvious. I actually went to the Michigan Department of State Voter Information Center, and I tested for myself. I ran the names of these dead people through there who had died, you know, decades ago, and sure enough, the system told me, yes, they got an absentee ballot. Yes, they voted. And then the fake fact checkers called up the Department of State and they said, hey, people are saying dead people voted in Michigan. Uh, is that true? They say, oh, well, when we find a dead person has voted, we, we don't count their vote. Well, of course they were going to say it. What are they going to say? Oh, yeah, dead people are voting all over. Biden is raising them from the dead. Uh, of course that's what they said. And yet the fake fact checkers said that was false when actually they admitted in their own article that that was happening and that they were having to take these dead people votes out of the counting. It's incredible the psyop that we're in right nowadays. 
Well, and, and, and Sidney Powell, a couple days after the election, and uh, this is after we restored General McInerney's interview and brought it to DaveJanda.com. That's where the interview is. You won't find it on YouTube, folks. And feel free to go to DaveJanda.com. Uh, and, and it's right in the red box, right toward the top of the homepage network. That Alex, a couple days after the election, Sidney Powell went on Lou Dobbs, who I believe is one of the few people at Fox who who will tell the truth and doesn't care if they're going to fire him because they know he knows they won't because the uprising would – there'd be nobody left watching Fox if they got rid of Lou. Uh, Sidney – Powell said the following. I want your take. Derek, hit it. Your thoughts first about the, the knowledge now that uh, the Justice Department is involved in this uh, review of the election. Well, I'm delighted to hear that. I think there are any number of things they need to investigate, including the likelihood that 3% of the vote total was changed in the pre-election voting ballots that were collected digitally by using the Hammer program and a software program called Scorecard. That would have amounted to a massive change in the vote that would have gone across the country and explains a lot of what we're seeing. In addition, they ran an algorithm to calculate votes they might need to come up with for Mr. Biden in specific areas. I think that explains what happened in Michigan, where the computer glitch resulted in a change of votes of uh, about 5,500 in favor of President Trump, just in one of 47 districts. All those districts need to be checked for that same, quote, software glitch, end quote, that would change the result in Michigan dramatically. Um, the same thing is happening in other states. We've had hundreds of thousands of ballots mysteriously appear for uh, solely for Mr. Biden, which is statistically impossible as a matter of mathematics. It, it can all be documented. We are putting it into materials that we will file in federal court, and we need to seek relief in multiple states to enjoin the certification of any election results. Well, Cindy, let's go back to to uh, Hammer and Scorecard. Are, are those the names that you just used uh, for those programs? Uh, what's being done about it, and and how broadly were they used by vote uh, counters uh, in various states? I, th I think they were very broadly used, but but not by the vote counters. They were used by the forces in the Democratic operatives that had access to these programs through the, the government access points that they have and used it illegally to change votes in this country. It's got to be investigated probably by the president's most trusted military intelligence officials who can get into the system and see what was done. But we do have some evidence that that is exactly what happened. And they've used it against other entities in other countries. It's just been turned recently against our own citizens here to change election results. It's absolutely appalling that that can be done. And whether it's called comp computer glitches or something else, somebody has actually gone into the system and changed voting results. Alex, your take. Yeah, Sydney Powell is exactly right, and I've, I've just been thrilled with her calling this out. And I would not want to be on the wrong side of Sydney Powell. She is a true patriot. She's a brilliant legal mind, and um, you know I would take very seriously what she had to say. She also went on uh, even more recently, and she said they were fixing to release the Kraken. <laughs> so, uh, I think this is going to be a very exciting time. I think a lot of evil is going to be exposed, and no matter how hard. They try to keep this under wraps, keep it in the shadows. This is all coming out. Even regular people know this. You know, they hear Sidney Powell. They they see in the alternative media. People are emailing, uh, pamphleting. People are talking with each other. You know, I talk to taxi drivers and mechanics and stewardesses on airplanes. Everybody knows about this. Is concerned about this. No matter how hard the fake media wants to pretend otherwise, the truth of this is going to come out. And I believe, as Sidney Powell has explained, a lot of these people are going to end up in jail. I agree with you. I um, There are certain things I can say and certain things I can't say. As you know, Alex, I'm a friend of Sidney's, and I am not about to jeopardize um, the potential cases against these scum. But I, uh, number one, you don't want to be on the wrong side of Sidney. And number two... She's incredibly courageous and uh, and will fight to the death when it comes to the deep state. 
Number three, uh, interesting. Um, very nobody in the bought off lamestream fake media. Other, you heard the words out of Lou Dobbs' mouth: hammer, scorecard, ele- essentially uh, electronic cyber warfare. There's nobody else in the bought off lamestream fake media that'll go near this. Haven't been for years, as you know. We've been pushing on this cord for over three years since General McInerney and Admiral Lines came on this platform, March nineteenth, twenty seventeen, and spoke about it. But. But um, if it wasn't for Sidney Powell bringing this forward to the American public about what the deep state was up to, we would be even in a bigger in, – in, in, I, I think the, the, the country would be lost at this point. Yeah, I think you're right, Dave. And there are many more patriots like her who are in the shadows right now, who are working very hard to uh, keep America a free nation, who are working to expose and overturn – uh, the fraudulent voting. And I think right now we're coming up on an unprecedented opportunity to expose the deep state. And yeah, I, I think Fox News and, and certain other fake media outlets have done a real good job of trying to make people think that the deep state is just some rogue bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. who are trying to interfere with the president. Uh, it goes so much deeper than that. And I think Donald Trump now has a good understanding of that, and so do many others. And now is going to be the time to show the American people uh, the true nature of what we have been up against. And, you know, all, all those times that the fake media called people like Trump and people who supported him conspiracy theorists and kooks and extremists, uh, it is now time for a real civics lesson. As uh, Sun Tzu put it in The Art of War, mm-hmm. if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you're going to lose every single battle. Well, what we need now is for the American people to understand not just who we are as a nation, our heritage and our incredible history as a people, but also who is the enemy. And for that, the deep state must be exposed. That means the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergers, the Trilaterals, the Skull and Bonesmen, uh, the Bohemian Grovers, all these weirdos with their secret little societies and their weird little rituals and all the rest of it. All of this needs to be brought out into the light. Everybody who was involved in the effort to overthrow our nation, overthrow our constitutional republic, uh, they need to be uh, brought out of the shadows. They need to be put under oath. Uh, if they want to testify and expose others and maybe get immunity, that's a good idea. If not, they ought to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And uh, I just released a book, Dave, on the deep state. I hope uh, if people are you know, need to learn about this, it is one resource that's out there. It's called Deep State, the Invisible Government Behind the Scenes. And I go through all these different organizations, all of their tricks, and uh, into, even into the coronavirus, into the riots, and all of it, because I think this is one of the most critical issues of our time. First, we've got to save uh, the nation and stop the steal of this election. Then we have to go on offense. And to be able to go on offense, we need to know who the enemy is, how they work, what are their names, you know, what organizations are they affiliated with, and, and then the real work can begin of uh, restoring this nation, turning back to our Constitution, to our godly heritage, and, uh, and becoming a free America once again. Folks, we're speaking with Alex Newman from the newamerican.com. Alex, give the name of the book again and where people can get it because this is this is a book that that, that nobody nobody will speak about in the bought off lamestream fake media. First of all, name of the book and where they can get it. Hey, thank you so much, Dave. So, uh, the book is called Deep State: The Invisible Government Behind the Scenes. Um, I, I don't like Amazon at all, so I don't recommend them. But you can get the ebook there if you're interested. If you want a, a physical copy, there's uh, two ways to get it. So far, it's, it literally just came out, so it's, it hasn't even been uh, broadly distributed yet. But you can get it by going to my website at libertysentinel.org. That's Liberty Sentinel, S-E-N-T-I-N-E-L dot O-R-G forward slash donate, and there's instructions there. You can send me uh, 19 bucks, and I'll put it in the mail for you. Or you can get it from uh, shopjbs.com. That's shopjbs.com. Uh, it's the newest release there. It's from Western Islands Publishers. And um, you, know, it, it, you can also get it, like I said, online at, uh, at Amazon. And I do encourage people to learn about this deep state because we have got to understand it if we're going to defeat it. Alex, I think the next, you know, they went from there's absolutely no fraud to, well, there's no massive fraud to, well, <laughs> there, there, there might be only limited fraud to, or, you know, and, and the next thing they're going to do, Alex, and I, and I want I want to know how you think we should counter this. They're going to say, well, this was just a little software glitch. And there was some human error. We've already seen, heard a little bit of this. Oh, there was some human error in it, but this was a little software glitch. Alex, Alex, tell me if I'm wrong, but please correct me. 
But as far as I'm concerned, based on my analysis of this and input from a lot of other people, this was a multi-level, multifaceted, coordinated criminal vote fraud operation. And this was not, not a little software glitch. There's absolutely no doubt about it, Dave. In fact, what you just described is, is the perfect uh, description of what happened. And one of the ways you know this is because every single example of this was in favor of Joe Biden. Right? These aren't glitches. If we're dealing with glitches, then just you know statistical probabilities, you'd figure 50% of the glitches would be for Trump, 50% of the glitches would be for Biden. And yet in every case, the dead people voting, uh, the vote rigging through Dominion systems, the vote rigging through scorecard, uh, the glitches... The, uh, the fraudulent mail-in ballots, the ballot harvesting. We've got affidavits filed all over this country of people exposing this kind of stuff. And in every case, it is vote rigging in favor of Joe Biden. Now, you know, certainly there can be isolated instances of you know, local people trying to rig the vote for Biden who may not have been part of the overall broader conspiracy. But there is clearly uh, a central direction to this. It was very strategic. They figured out where do we need to add the fraudulent votes. Detroit, Philadelphia were two obvious candidates. So clearly this was organized from above. Clearly there are international forces involved here in Europe, in China, in other places. And they must be found out. They must be prosecuted. They must be held accountable. And if they're not held accountable, we will have this for the rest of our existence as a nation. So that's how high the stakes are. The future of our free republic hangs in the balance, and this vote-rigging fraud might be the key to unraveling all of it. Now, Alex, what do you say to the people who justifiably say, wait a minute, we've been waiting on Barr and Durham and all these other folks to bring charges against these the, the first coup plot, the fake Russian hoax, Ukraine hoax, the all that, we've been waiting for years on this, and we got essentially till December 14th when the electors said, what are the chances we're going to be able to expose this, uncover this, and get this done when for years we've been hearing the Durham and Barr are going to come out and we haven't seen a show pony from them yet? Yeah, I, I've been saying, I, I literally said when Barr was first nominated that this was not a good pick. This guy comes from Bush world. We all know that Bush is completely part of the deep state. Both Bush, actually, all three Bushes, right, going back uh, all the way to Prescott Bush, who was arrested for helping the Nazis through Union Bank of New York. Uh, you know, the, the Bush family is, is, as far as I'm concerned, as much part of the deep state as Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. And so, and, and so you know, we can't depend on Barr. The thing is, the election fraud is being exposed without Bob Barr. And there's a few of these people within the Trump administration who I've been warning about all along. In fact, I, I've been crying foul about Mark Esper for months mm. and months. The guy's a member of the yes. Council on Foreign Relations. Finally, mm. Trump took the right step and fired him and replaced him with a decent, honorable patriot. So, I, you know, I, I wouldn't count on Barr. If I were Trump, I would fire him now and put in uh, a real prosecutor there who's really going to go after these criminals. But... Um, you know, I, I think there are multiple avenues being pursued, and we don't need to put all our eggs in the bar basket to uh, to have this exposed. So. No, that's exactly right. And in fact, if you look at the, the lawyers he's brought around him in the last uh, four or five days, uh, Sidney Powell, uh, now brought into the White House, essentially to, okay, boys, you know, uh, uh, men and women, let's get this done. Uh, Sidney Powell, uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, Victoria Tensi, Joe, De, Joe DeGeneva, and Lynn Wood. I mean, that that is a, a, a bulldog team if you're ever going to have one from a legal standpoint. And that, I believe, Alex, is why we're going to get some answers and get them fast because of those individuals as opposed to the usual political bureaucrats that uh, twiddle their thumbs and allow the deep state to slither away. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Dave. That is a phenomenal legal team right there. And uh, once the dust settles, I put some of those guys uh, in charge of the Justice Department and and start prosecuting. You know, it's good. We need these guys in the lawsuits. We need them working on these legal cases. But uh, at some point, and, you know, Sidney Powell has experience with this. At some point, criminal charges need to be brought against these individuals, these organizations, these conspirators, these fraudsters, these vote riggers. And uh, I, I am confident that that time will come. And I think everybody who loves this country and wants to see justice done needs to get active. We can't just wait for the lawyers to handle it. You need to be talking with your neighbors. You need to be getting this information out. The media is not going to do it for us. We all have a role to play here.